Take the first question we asked. It's why we're here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, at a food festival that celebrates what's practically the state food, the chili pepper. The question is of great personal interest to me, but it isn't one you'd imagine leading to a medical breakthrough. So here's the question. Why are peppers hot? Well, why are they hot? Chilies are hot because they have a compound or a set of compounds called capsaicinoids that's found inside the fruits along the placenta. And contrary to a lot of beliefs, the, the walls have no heat, the seeds don't have any heat. They're only in this one little area here, this where this orange coloring is. Yeah. That is the capsaicinoids. So the more orange, the hotter the chili. We think in nature, the plant evolved is to keep mammals from eating the fruits because when the seed passes through a mammal's digestive tract, they're destroyed. And so, but birds can come along, pick the fruit off, eat it, and then spread the seeds and put like a fertilizer pellet with it. So the, the, the capsaicin in pepper, which tastes so hot to us and tastes so good to me, is really right. to keep me from eating it, huh? Exactly. It's to keep, get, keep mammals away right. and get birds to concentrate on because that's how the seed spreads? Exactly. The birds don't taste a capsaicinoids. They don't sense the heat. What they're doing is getting a very good source of vitamin A. The flavors and the aromas uh, are why the world's cuisines have gone to chili peppers. In other words, within 100 years after Columbus brought back the first chili pepper seeds from the New World, they spread to the Old World and completely went around the world in less than 100 years. And what would curries be like without chili peppers? What would Thai food be like without chili peppers? I think of Sichuan food, one of my favorite foods. I can't, th I can't imagine it without chili peppers, but they ate there without chili peppers for right. thousands of years, I guess. Thousands of years. My host's plan is for me to sample some of the different peppers here so they can appreciate their subtleties. But for me, subtlety and peppers don't mix. So offered a choice of mild, medium, or hot. Let's get hot right okay, away. Okay, well, this is the uh, capsicum baccatum. I'll let you try this. Also known as ahi in South America. It's good. <laughs> Now you said you like hot peppers. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm not the only one here playing with fire. If somebody eats a pepper that's too hot for them, what do you recommend to, to calm down their mouth? Well, there's a lot of folk remedies. People say that if you eat sugar or if you drink a lot of beer, you won't care how hot it is. But mostly it's dairy products that help you. And the thicker, the heavier the dairy products, the better. Like yogurt, for example, is good. Sour cream is very, very good. And that's one of the reasons sour cream is served with enchiladas out here in New Mexico for the people who get burned down. We're going to make you into a connoisseur after this now. So Paul and Dave are still determined to teach me the fine art of pepper tasting. But I get the horrible feeling it's already too late. The three areas to look for is the front of your mouth, mid-mouth, or back of the throat, that throat area. Tastes like oatmeal. I don't taste anything. Oh, uh, well, we burned your, your taste buds I, I, on those hot yeah, ones. Yeah. So, well, let's try this one. Okay. Let's see what happens here. It's a little hotter now. Okay. <clears throat> Tomato sauce. Oh. We burned you out. That's what the problem is. And it might be several hours before your palate gets back to normal. Why are we in this red light like this? Burned out my palate. This sounds serious, which is why I find myself sitting in a very strange room in Baltimore. It's very futuristic. Yes, it is. Well, look, there are little screens down there. Mm -hmm. I've come here to check my heat sensing abilities against some of the best trained tongues in the world belonging to the members of the pepper tasting panel at one of the nation's largest spice companies, McCormick's. Sylvia King is in charge. Everybody get set and go. We start with what's reckoned to be a mild solution of the hot pepper chemical capsaicin. Swallow. We're instructed to assign it a five on a heat scale of zero to 15. So is everybody ready? Go ahead and rinse with water and rinse with a cracker. A cracker? Hmm. What happened to the sour cream? So does the cracker really clear out the sensation of, um, it will help. of heat? That yeah. will be part of it. If you get ready for your strong reference. The idea it's here is to tune our tongues to a standard set of heats, concluding with a dose of capsaicin scoring a respectable 13 on the heat scale. Swallow. <laughs> Smooth. 
Okay, with our tongues now calibrated, it's time to see how we all rate a sample from a real hot pepper, which is why, by the way, the light's red, to disguise the sample's color so it won't influence our score. Go. I'll give it an eight. And my fellow tongues? I would give it about a 7.9. 7.5? 7 about a seven. 7.2? About 7.6. Well, that's Seven. a relief. My tongue seems to be right in line with the experts. 7.8. 7. About an 8.2. I'm sort of amazed that I even could taste anything oh, really? uh, uh, in the mild one, you know? I mean, I, I was really afraid when I came in that you'd say, this is the mild one. I'd say, no, that's the water. <laughs> of course, the spice company didn't set up the heat sensing panel just for my peace of mind. It's one of several ways they check the heat of all the peppers they buy so that their customers don't get a nasty surprise once the peppers ground into powder or flakes. Still, heartened that my tongue has survived years of hot pepper pummeling, I took it to a specialist. So if I can taste this as extremely bitter, I'm a super I'm taster. A super taster. And if I can't taste any, if anything, it tastes like paper if it tastes like a you, piece of paper, you're a non-taster. Oh boy! And if it's something in the middle, you're a medium taster. Be sure the paper gets really moistened with your saliva and moves all around so it covers your whole tongue. Are you tasting anything? It's bitter. Uh, yes, yes. Authentic super taster. It's really bitter. Okay. Oh. Uh oh. All right. I think now it's time to take it out. <laughs> if I'm not a super taster, I don't want to know. <laughs> this is close enough. Okay. Only one person in four is a super taster. Click. I can't share that experience with you because I'm a non-taster. Oh, so While another one in four, like Linda, doesn't taste the paper at all. The paper was only the beginning of my tongue checkup. Next came blue food coloring. Okay, swallow. Move your tongue in your mouth a couple times and swallow a couple times, and that will distribute the dye. And then we will have a look. Stick your tongue out. Oh, magnificent. The staining is absolutely perfect. I can see the pink fungiform papillae. Mm -hmm. Your tongue looks like it's tiled in fungiform papillae. Mm. You definitely look like a super taster. I'm a super taster. <laughs> the fungiform papillae are little sprouts on my tongue. Each one harbors a half dozen or so taste buds, with nerve fibers connecting them to my brain. While some of these fibers convey the sense of taste, most of them don't sense taste at all, but pain. Which brings us back to hot peppers. You are feeling way more pain from eating a red pepper than I would, for example. Because I have more of these That's correct. Uh, structures. That's right. You have way more pain fibers, so you perceive way more pain. This is really weird because I eat far more red pepper on my food than anybody I know. Now, of course, it may be that I just like pain more than most people. But there's another explanation, which goes back to that hot pepper I ate in Santa Fe. Because it not only knocked out my sense of taste, after the initial burn, it actually numbed the pain fibers that nestle around my taste buds. Now that this is cooled a little, I put the pepper in. Which is why I'm helping make hot pepper candy. A dash of cayenne pepper before the traditional taffy pull. My thumb just stuck to this. Oh, there we go. Both thumbs. Oh my I have gosh. both thumbs in the taffy. I can't get my thumbs out of the taffy. Here's some. That's and the result is a candy that Price. Linda Bartoshuk uses to treat patients with painful mouth sores. The candy was the idea of a student of hers, but others had thought of it before. If you go back and read accounts of Aztec medicine, you'll find out that the Aztecs were using uh, chili peppers mixed with honey to treat sores in the mouth. Mm. My guess is that every culture that's ever consumed these chili peppers has figured out that they're really good analgesics. We're just the, long, the last in a long line of people who've looked at that. One man who's happy that researchers are again exploring the pain-killing properties of peppers is a long-term survivor of AIDS living in San Francisco. A few years ago, he began suffering agonizing pain in his feet due to a condition known as neuropathy. The pain was very, very deep inside my foot, just underneath the toes. The best way I can describe it is if there was uh, broken glass in there on the nerves to the point that my life was just becoming very sedentary. An active runner and volunteer with the AIDS Quilt Project, Geppetto Apodaca became housebound, his pain controllable only with powerful drugs. 
I thought if this pain continues and is all I can do for me are tranquilizers, then I just didn't want to go on any further. And that's pretty much where I was until I met uh, the pain management crew and Wendy Robbins. Interesting day to be doing this from a symbolic perspective. This is the start of the Jewish calendar. <laughs> Wendy Robbins, an anesthesiologist, figured if hot peppers numb pain in the mouth, why not elsewhere? That was part of the originality of the invention, was realizing that the same nerve fibers that are present in the mouth and signal hot or spice when we eat them are also present on the foot and therefore could probably be interacted with in the same way. Geppetto's treatment begins with a powerful local anesthetic smeared on his feet. Before we put capsaicin on him, we have to make sure he's pretty numb. Otherwise, the capsaicin itself would be exquisitely painful. The mask protects against the fumes from the capsaicin cream. This is a hundredfold more potent than the stuff that is available commercially. This is seven and a half percent by weight. If I touch this to your foot or anybody else's foot that wasn't anesthetized, it would be excruciatingly painful. While we wait for Geppetto's feet to bake, we have time for a quick visit with another team of San Francisco scientists. With research materials bought from local supermarkets, their goal was to find the molecule in our bodies that responds to pepper's heat. Among the peppers David Julius and Michael Caterina tested was the habanero, the hottest of all. <laughs> Tearing my eyes, <laughs> making it a little hard to breathe. <laughs> all for science, you know. What the researchers have found is the molecule in our nerves that hot peppers activate when they cause their painful burn. The molecule sits like a trap door on the surface of the pain fiber. Capsaicin unlatches the door, allowing calcium ions to rush in, and so firing off the pain message to the brain. Here's what happens when capsaicin is added to living cells that are cued to light up when the trap door opens. If you were to take the neurons that normally respond to pain in our bodies uh, and subject them to this same sort of assay, this is exactly what they would look like. They would start off purple, and then when you add capsaicin to them, they would all light up. Silent scream. The researchers discovered that very hot water also makes cells give this same response. In fact, the original job of the trapdoor molecule in our bodies may have been to detect and warn of dangerous heat. So here's the ultimate reason peppers are hot. Capsaicin fools our cells into thinking they're on fire. Right now, Geppetto's feet know the feeling only too well. I'm beginning to feel a very, very, very hot sensation on my feet right now. But just as the hot pepper candy relieves mouth sores, so Geppetto's much more dramatic treatment should relieve his much more <laughs> devastating pain wow. once the burn wears off. The first time we did it, my initial feeling when I got home was the pain was so bad from the capsation, I couldn't realize that, that it was going to get any better. And as the third day came around and I was able to put on shoes comfortably for the first time, it was like being born again. This time, Geppetto was running again within the week. And if his previous treatments are a guide, he'll remain virtually pain-free for months. Meanwhile, Wendy Robbins hopes that many other patients with debilitating pain can also be treated with Pepper's chemical heat. You see what I mean? One thing in science just seems to keep leading to another. <laughs>